What's good? It's your boy for nine. Oh my goodness, man. Eddie Hearns, Eddie Hearns, man. When are you gonna stop it, man? Man, 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 man. All right, so Eddie Hearn, of course, we know what's going on with Eddie Hearn. <laughs> He says that the offer is BS from Deontay Wilder to Anthony Joshua. And Shelly Finkel responded to the something that he said about how they'd done business in the past <laughs> and <laughs> gave three solid examples of where Eddie Hearn has done business with, uh, done business with or had made offers to the PBC specifically to Shelly Finkel and and Shelly Finkel and or Deontay Wilder in the past where he did business in the where he delivered an offer in the exact same fashion that that Deontay Wilder's team just delivered an offer to him because as you know people are saying it's you know how can he accept an offer right without having a contract now when I'm listening to this I'm, I'm I mean I, I, it, it drives me nuts, the use of the words on both sides. I got to tell you, both sides of it. I understand what they're saying, but their verbiage is just a little bit off, at least the way that I think about it. So it just and that's because as because I'm a lawyer and I write contracts for a living and I went to law school and I was taught to think about what a contract is. Right. <laughs> I've written hundreds of contracts. Right. I've negotiated hundreds of contracts, small, medium sized contracts, not inside of the inside specifically boxing contracts, but buying, buying, selling, employment, all kind of all kind of different ones. Right. And uh, so for me, what a contract is, my the verbiage that I use is slightly different than what maybe a financial guy would use. But so I get what they're saying. And Eddie Hearn is just so full of it. But then this channel who shall remain nameless, man, for a guilty pleasure. I listen. I listen to what they said about a verbal contract being enforceable and how if you accept. If you accept a 50 million dollar offer that as soon as you're accepted, as soon as you accept it that you could be liable for $50 million, (laughs) which shows a complete and utter lack of understanding for what a contract is. So anyway, before I get into that, um, and I'm going to do it just because enough people have asked me about this and what my opinion is where I'm, so I'm going to walk through it for you and you can Google this. This is not, you might need if My explanation might help you a little bit if you Google these terms, right? But it's, it's there. All right. And you can go find an attorney, somebody that, you know, and ask him if I'm telling the truth. Okay, go check. (laughs) Double check me with somebody who you trust. All right. Because it's pretty basic stuff. But anyway, before I do that, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon. We're going to probably do a live stream today during these fights that come up later today uh, with Danny Jacobs and Selecki and the other ones that are going on today. And the best way to know about these or to uh, the live stream is to subscribe and hit the bell icon. And when you hit the bell icon, hit get all notifications so that you don't get just occasional ones, that you get them all, and you'll be able to attend the live stream or watch the videos when we uh, drop them. Also, we'd definitely like to uh, thank everybody in the super chat that donated to the channel and the cause that we're raising money from uh, for, and also the Venmo and the soup and my new Patreons. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Gregory Wyatt. Thank you so much to my other, that was my first Patreon, uh, patron. And I really do appreciate it. I'm going to put a video together and start naming the Patreons and the, in the, in the like to thank you guys for supporting this, the cause. So now let me go into first this letter that Deontay Wilder's manager sent to Eddie Hearn. Good morning, Eddie. You know as well as us how a big fight is made. First, an offer is made. And if the offer is accepted, a contract will follow. You saying we didn't send you a contract is a smokescreen. Your own recent actions will bear me out. (laughs) 
One, you made an offer to Deontay to fight Anthony Joshua. This is for the same fight that we this is for the same fight that we made an offer to Joshua. The only difference was that you made your made an offer to Deontay first. In your offer to Deontay, did you include a contract? No. Why? Because Deontay never accepted your offer. <laughs> Two, you recently made us an offer for Deontay to fight another one of your fighters, Dillian White. Did you include a contract? No. Why? Because Deontay did not accept your offer. Three, you made an offer to Vladimir Klitschko to fight Anthony Joshua. Did you send a contract? No. <laughs> After some negotiation, Vladimir accepted a revised offer and then is and then is when you sent a contract to us. How can you complain that you did not receive a contract from us when your own actions prove that is not how a deal in boxing a, a deal is done in boxing? If uh, Anthony agrees to accept our offer, we will be glad to offer to supply you with a contract, proofs of funds, and any relevant data needed to complete the contract. Thanks, Shelley. Okay, right there you have. And we all know it. And if you say you don't know it, you're just telling a story. That Deontay Wild, Anthony, uh, excuse me, Eddie Hearn sent an offer to Eddie Hearn. I mean, to Deontay Wilder, a $12.5 million offer to for a fight with Anthony Joshua. Deontay Wilder did not accept that term. No, we do not want to fight you for $12.5 million. No, thank you. And what we will do is we will counter offer you and send you a proposal which said $50 million with a not to exceed a 50-50 split of whatever, the revenue of the fight, right? He also did the same thing with Dillian White, where Dillian, he offered Dillian White uh, Dilly, uh, Eddie Hearn offered Anthony Joshua four point five million dollars, without having the con the, and then that term, that financial term was rejected. So once he rejected that financial term, there was no need to go into a negotiation with all of the other details if the most high level one was rejected. Right, Vladimir Klitschko. Deontay, uh, Anthony Joshua sent, or Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua sent a request, an offer to fight Vladimir Klitschko. Vladimir, they did not send a written contract with him, <laughs> with it. Because if, because if Wilder said, uh, Klitschko said, I don't want to make, I don't want to fight you. Why would they go into terms like force majeure, Right. Which is what happens if the fight winds up, you know, there's a gigantic electrical storm in the UK, in the UK or during the site, you know, where the fight is. What happens in the case where a tornado wipes out, you know, Wembley Stadium? Right. Because that is going to be take. That's a term that's going to be in the contract. It's called force majeure or an act of God. Right. Uh is, are you going to be able to assign this right? See, these are all different things in the formal contract that they're going to lay out. Uh, the ability to assign, right? So what happens if Deontay Wilder um, uh, or the PBC, what, if, what happens if they sell? What happens if they, no, what happens if Deontay Wilder gets stripped of his belt for a positive PED test? Are you going to then hold me responsible for the fight? No, Right. Because, but are they going to negotiate that term? No. What about insurance? The fighters being insured and what the insurance limits, the insurance limits are going to be on the fight. Are they going to negotiate? Are they going to go through all of those points and make offers on all of those different points before, before a fight is made? What about indemnification? What about an indemnification clause? What, ha what happens if something uh, winds up where somebody um, uh, something goes wrong on Deontay Wilder's side or Anthony Joshua's side and somebody winds up suing uh, Deontay Wilder, right? Or sues Anthony Joshua for something Deontay Wilder is responsible for, 
right? That's called, that's an indemnification clause. You're going to indemnify or you're going to protect me against some type of lawsuit, right? It could be from pay-per-view, right? If you don't show up to the fight, right? And the pay-per-view companies have already, uh, you know, negotiated, you know, spent a lot of money on marketing and stuff like that, but then you just no show. And then they turn around and sue us. Are you going to indemnify us? And if you indemnify us, are you gonna, is that going to include reasonable attorney's fees, right? Or is it going to have some clause in there where you say that there's some mutual, you know, uh, or whatever? There's a bunch of different clauses that go into an agreement that you would never discuss until after you come up with the high level things, right? You can go through. It, I mean, there's clauses after clause. There's assignments. There's there's indemnification clauses. There's force majeure clauses. There's um, I mean, just a lot of different things that go into the actual written document, right? Written trademarks, right? Who uh, you know, Deontay Wilder has a trademark. If they're gonna display the trademark, is you know whatever it is, right? Whatever. What are the exact, what are we going to consider to be a cost? What are we going to consider to be, you know, what, you know, what costs do you have to incur that have nothing to do with the fight, right? What type of cost did the other person incur that has nothing to do with the fight? What if the WBC doesn't sanction the fight, right? All those type of things you have to talk about, but Eddie Hearn is full of it. If he thinks that they're going to go through every single solitary one of those terms before they agree with whether uh, how much they're going to pay him. <laughs> it's just ridiculous for him to say it. So even in the guy and the people that get on these channels, man, my God, dog, seriously, man, I, you will very rarely ever see me make a video where I start talking about whether or not somebody has proper footwork when they throw their right hand or whether or not somebody, I'm not Barry Robinson, I'm not going to talk about whether somebody has efficient head control, all right? That's not my lane. But when I hear somebody, people talk about a contract as if offer and acceptance are the only part that is included in it, (laughs) you don't know what you're talking about. A contract is an offer, it's an acceptance, and it's consideration, You not only have to, you have to make an offer, the person has to accept it, there has to be some type of consideration in in it for, that somebody's receiving, both parties receive, usually money, right? And it doesn't, no con, none, very, not no contracts, excuse me, there's specific contracts that have to be in writing, but many contracts don't have to be in writing, right? (laughs) Many of them don't. But even if you have a contract to say that somebody just because you accepted an offer and you haven't received any consideration, the person hasn't given, hasn't realized their consideration. What are you going to sue them for? Because you have to have damages. Yes. Okay. There was offer. There was an accept. There was there was an acceptance. Deontay Wilder says twelve point five fifty million dollars, right up front uh, or guaranteed. 50-50 50-50 split of the of the of the revenue. And they say, yeah, okay, I accept. I like that. Now, do you think tomorrow if Deontay Wilder sprains his knee or the WBC doesn't uh take the fight, that all of a sudden now Deontay Wilder, Deontay Wilder automatically owes uh Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua $50 million tomorrow? No, they don't. Because they have to be able to prove that they have some damages. What was the debt? How did you? Yes, you offered it. Yes, you were offered. Yes, he accepted. Did you receive your consideration? Did you? What was the consideration for the $50 million? You having a fight. Okay, you having a fight. So did you have the fight? No, you didn't have the fight. Well, what did you what did you do? What did you do? What what are you? What's your basis of asking for damages. You either had to have relied on him for something. Okay. Well, if you relied on the fact that you were going to have a fight, then what was your, what, what was the damage? Okay. You're saying you relied. What did you rely on? Oh, well, we were going to fight Pulev, but we decided not to take the Pulev fight. And we wound up, um, having to pay a hundred thousand dollars in fees to 
the um to the WBA to get out of the Pulev fight, and then Deontay Wilder walked away, so we incurred a hundred thousand dollars worth of uh, damages. And they said, "Okay, that sounds reasonable. So maybe we can award you a hundred thousand dollars for the damages to make you whole." Because damages should put you as in good a position as you would have been if you had not entered into that agreement, if you had not relied on that part person, right? Or you can have another one, which is punitive damages. Will they say, will the court say, oh, we need to punish Deontay Wilder or we need to punish uh, uh, Anthony Joshua and Eddie Hearn for having breached the contract, Right. Then there's other damages like restitution, right? Or uh, you want to pay me back for the money that I spent specifically, you know, in preparing for the fight, right? Which is slightly different than what you relied on, but you need to rest. You need to, uh, I need restitution. I won't get into that. Then the other one is you could have special consequential damages. We're saying, then you're talking about profit. If you would have kept your part of the bargain, I would have earned $48 million. I would have profited $48 million, right? So I'm not talking about just what I what I would have had invested in the money I spent, but I want the I want a percentage of the money that I would have earned. So when these when you guys talk about these contracts, first of all, it's offer and it's acceptance. And when Shelly Finkel says you have to accept, yeah, you accepted the terms. But nobody's bound until there's some consideration. Or till somebody does something in reliance of that, of that, of that. And so it's just when somebody got on here, man, I'm not going to say this person's channel. He said, oh, you know, in New York City, verbal contracts are enforceable. No, dummy. Contract, ver, written contracts, written contracts <laughs> help you, emo, help you document when there was a, what the offer was, what the whether there was actual accept, ex, uh, acceptance, what the consider what specifically the consideration was the considerations are, and what are the rules? What are the rules that that govern the relationship? And it's difficult to determine that when the contracts aren't written, right? But but if you can prove all that. If you can prove that you made an offer to somebody that they accepted it, that you gave them what they wanted, their consideration, but you didn't get what you wanted. And you can show that you either relied on you relied on them or you can convince somebody that they need to be that they need to be punished because they did it. Or if they specifically agreed that they were going to allow you to make some profit or whatever it was, whatever those whatever your theories of damages are. If you can prove that to the satisfaction of whoever it is that has jurisdiction over that problem, right? (laughs) Then you're going to get your money or you're going to get whatever it is, specific performance. There could be situations where you want somebody, you want specific performance, right? Look, man, money, like, for example, like if you have an agreement with somebody where you say that there is a, you know, a confidentiality agreement. And you say, look, man, if you give up this information, there's no amount of money that's going to make up for this. So I, you have to agree that a court is going to allow me that a court is going to issue an injunction against you continuing to take a certain act. So, I mean, I don't want to get overly technical on this, but look. It's obvious what Shelley Finkel saying is true. You're never going to get into subject into issues of like, OK, what if there's a what if you uh, you disagree and I disagree? Where are we going to hold? Where are we going to go to court over this? Who's going to hold jurisdiction over this? Is it going to be in the U.S.? Is it going to be in the U.K.? Is it going to be or is it going to be a me, a moderator? Like, is it going to be an arbitrator or a mediator that's going to do it? Are we going to go to arbitration? And if we go to arbitration, what laws are we going to use? Do do the laws of Great Britain apply? Do the laws of the United States apply? And if they apply, if the laws of the United States apply, is uh, are the laws of New York going to apply or the are the laws of California going to apply? It's completely and utterly ridiculous to assume that that in order to start talking about a fight, 
that you're going to have to write all of that stuff down for Eddie Hearn to read the first time out. He's just a liar. And he knows that this is foolishness. There's no circumstance where you're going to go through all of that. When he's saying the contract, when he's talking about every bit of the details, there's no reason, no logical reason for having a conversation about jurisdiction, uh, mediation versus going to a court of law to, to uh, to dispute resolution. Right. There's no need for you to document your dis- your dispute resolution process. There's no need for you to lay out your notification process like, hey, if you want to inform me some about something under this contract, how do you officially do that? Well, you have to send a fax to the number listed here. And if you want to make an official request for an amendment, you're going to have to send this. You're going to have to email it to Shelly Finkel's office. Those are all the details that is in this particular conversation are that are being referred to as the contract. <laughs> right. The contract really, that's why I'm saying the way that this verbiage is for me is a little bit off is the offer, the acceptance and the consideration. Once you have offer, cons- offer, acceptance, consideration, there's also things where other people say, you know, like competency, you know, Oh, also, there are things like attestations to whether or not you actually have the ability to uh, bind the, uh, you know, to bind uh, your party. Right. (laughs) Also, assigning rights to heirs and all kind of stuff, man. (laughs) It's ridiculous, man. Anyway, man. So, look, rookie dude, don't don't talk about contracts anymore and do any more of those videos about contracts because you don't know what you're talking about, dog. And Eddie Hearn is full of it again. And anybody with two bits of common sense know that he is. So anyway, with that, I'm out. Peace.